Hello, I'm Butch Hill, and welcome to HDCast. I've got a special guest today, Mike Betts, and Mike is uh, all about education and training. So, Mike, Mike, I don't know where he is. Hold on. Mike, hey, Mike, you're there. All right, awesome. Hey, so, Mike, Butch. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Where were you? I was hiding. All right, well, you're here at least now. We can find out some things about education training. And I know for years you've been the master at this and been working hard at doing a lot of this. And I know we're at HDAW show right now, and this is 2023. And I know you've met uh, and you know a, a gal that uh, is a part of the WyoTech. And, you know, that's pretty cool. And uh, can we get her in? Yeah, I hey, think so. Better yet, remember what I did to get you yeah. in here? Watch this. Hello, Mike. Cindy, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I am having the best time here at HDAW. You know, it's so great to meet you. Uh, we so appreciate you and WyoTech coming to this amazing event and introducing us to, you know, all the great things you're doing. And the show you did today, you know, the, the panel on, you know, women in the industry and, you know, what it takes to be successful and those amazing panelists you had today just... Yeah. It was so impressive. Yes, Bonnie and Jen, they really have led forward in the industry, and, and they're that perfect example of strong women doing amazing things. They're kind of, you know, they're not just starting out, you know, and, and Bonnie's like a champion, uh, award winner, two big awards last year or two. Yeah, Bonnie is actually the first woman to have won Future Tech at TMC. And then just this last year, she came back on a professional level with FedEx, and she placed second at TMC. So she is amazing. I no doubt one of these days she's going to bring it all home. Yeah, and then Jen uh, happens to work for Betts Truck Parts and Service as a manager and oversees you know, all the management of our Portland branch. And what a background she has in, uh, you know, she was a mechanic, she ran other businesses and heavy truck. And a mom. She's a mom of three kids. Yeah. And in and amongst all of that carried that weight. So to me, she's a true hero and in sticking with it and then her quiet leadership and the way she pushes forward is very admirable and a good example and a strong advocate for women as they go forward. Yeah, so for those that weren't, you know, with us today, what was that overall message for the industry? That message was, you know, women are two um, percent, basically, of the overall industry, and we want to change that. We want to change the, perce the uh, perception of women in automotive and diesel. We want to be able to talk about the great opportunities for them in these career paths, and if they love working on cars and trucks. This is an excellent career path for them. And also that industry needs to embrace um, what, it need, what it means to hire a woman tech, um, to be able to meet their needs and to listen to what they have to say. I think as long as women feel like they're being heard and that they see that change, they don't just want to, they don't want to just talk about it. They want to move forward with it. The one thing that I really found compelling with Jen was you have given her a career path and it was one of the most inspiring things to listen to because she really feels like she has a future and something to build on and that's that's admirable at best so good job oh thank you yeah. um you know listening to them you know on the panel um saying how much they just want to be treated like anybody else they don't want to come in the door because they're a woman and you, you know, you have to treat me differently. So, but they want to be treated respectfully and be admired just like everybody else. Right, as in anything, you want to fill a position because you're the most qualified. And you don't want that to be questioned later on. You want to give your best and do your best. So to just fill a quota is applying for a job. Uh, to go into a career, is an opportunity to grow and um, a company either gets that or they don't and I think those companies that are, are trying this and diversifying are seeing the great opportunities and potentials and there's there's the good the bad the ugly right we all have to address those things but again let's keep 
the idea that the reason we're doing this is that demographic of women that drive new cars every single year is 52%. Yeah, well, women That's a are big deal. Women are fifty-two percent of the workforce. There you go. You guys are, I mean, unbelievable. What's going on? And what about Which, after World War II when Rosie the Riveter came in, right? Yeah. And the muscle out there saying we can do it. They were manufacturers. They were building cars. They were building exactly. ammunition. And so why we fall back into that same stigma doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And let's also face it: the reason women are, are looking at all career paths is that it takes more than just that one income to sustain a family anymore. So gone are the days when you can just have a one income family and they want to be able to contribute. And they want to contribute at a level that based off of their abilities, they're eligible to receive that payment and, and respect. So I think it's important that, you know, we may be small, but we're mighty is there's a lot of truth to that. And then, Cindy, you guys, you know, since you've come aboard at WildTech, I mean, you have 850 students graduating a year. Well, so let me rephrase that. We've got, we start every quarter, we graduate every quarter. So the really cool thing about WildTech is that we are still growing in as much as our population changes every quarter. So our population base of WildTech right now is 850 students. And then we will graduate again coming up here in January, February, March. And then we'll have another new start. In October of this last year, we started over 325 brand new students in one start. So as we move into this next year, you know, we're hoping that our population base at one given time will be around 1,100. And we've got plans and, and drawings and permitting already done on 72 acres across the road to continue our growth. We just added a 90,000 square foot automotive facility that's full. Wow. And so when you think of the fact that 90,000 square foot opened in October 1, started January 1, we have the most remarkable facilities director and he subbed out the entire build but in light of everybody else with their, you know, shortages and not able to get parts and not able to get this, that, not us, we were able to build a 90,000 square foot automotive facility in, what is that, seven months, nine months? Well, WyoTech is definitely back under your leadership. I mean, you're doing an amazing job. Um, you know, again, I, we can't thank you enough for all you're doing. Um, I understand you're taking some of the heavy-duty uh, marketing groups uh, members up to WyoTech in April. So yes, we have industry uh, visiting the campus all the time, um, weekly. Matter of fact, we have one every Tuesday and every Thursday coming to campus. And in April, we are talking about having the HD come up and have one of their major spring meetings at WyoTech see our facility. It's one thing to be able to talk about great things happening, but then it's another thing to be able to show it, to show that what we're saying and what we're doing is actually accurate. And I love the fact that when people come to our campus, they're able to not only see that what we are doing, I've actually undersold it. And that they're like, oh my goodness, you know, Cindy, you didn't talk about this. And, and that when they see it, they see that we're the real deal. Well, you certainly are the real deal. I am, um, you know, you were talking about what is it that industry needs to do differently, I'm jumping back to the women, to make women want to come work for them. What do they need to do differently that they're not doing to be more successful in the future? You know, honestly, this is going to take time. This is one of those things where we've got seven generations of people on this earth right now, and every generation has a different way of thinking, right? So part of it is just our messaging, making sure that if, if we have women on our shop floors, let's make sure that we talk to them frequently. How's things going? And make them feel safe in talking about some of those things. I think it would alleviate a lot of the fears that I've heard about recently. Um, of bringing women on. Uh, I think when they have an issue and they feel safe talking about stuff like that, you will see results. 
Um, I know at WyoTech, our boss, Jim Mathis, is one of his strongest focuses is that we start in our high school message, make sure that they know of the viable careers that are available. So I think as an industry, you guys, we just, I think we need to be open-minded. It's a different day and we, we need to, you know, make sure that we are sharing with them as much as we possibly can and make sure that they feel safe. I wonderful, think, yeah. wonderful message. Thank you. Thank you for watching another HD cast. <laughs>